Hello everyone, you are watching The Cycling Day. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Every season there are some riders that perform so well that they go from somewhat unknown to most cycling fans and thrust themselves into the general cycling consciousness. So we thought it would be a good idea to look at 10 riders who did exactly that in 2021. And before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more great videos. Anyways, first on our list, we have a rider who definitely isn't new to the Pro Peloton, but he did make a huge step up in 2021 and that was Damiano Caruso of Bahrain Victorious. It was in the Giro d'Italia where the Italian actually got his first ever podium in a Grand Tour and this incidentally was his 14th Grand Tour in his career and on top of this achievement he actually managed to win on stage 20 as well up to Alp Motta and in the Vuelta Espana just to crown it off he also won the Alto Villefique stage which was very good to see. Anyways, coming in at number nine, we have the comeback kid that is Fabio Jakobsen, who in 2020 we feared would never ride a bike again after that horrific crash in the Tour of Poland last year. So it was an incredible sight, not just to see him ride a bike again, but also to win. And he did so on stage two of the Tour de Wallonia. And of course, he also won the final stage of that stage race. And then the big surprise came in the Vuelta a España, where he previously in 2019 had won two stages. Stages, and he managed to outdo that by winning three stages in total on top of that winning the points classification as well. His sensational year finished with two more wins in the Guixe Peel and also the Euro Metropole Tour as well. Quite a comeback for the 25 year old and a good breakthrough back to the main stage. Now we come to number eight, and this is another Bahrain victorious rider, Gino Madère, the Swiss rider who is enjoying his third year on the World Tour. Early on in the year, he was 10th overall in Paris-Nice, where he was incidentally also denied a stage win by Primus Roglic on stage seven. And Madère managed to win a stage in the Giro d'Italia, along with the Tour de Suisse as well. But the big headline for him was in the Vuelta a España, where the young Swiss rider had a strong third week that included three top 10 finishes and managed to propel himself up to fifth overall in the standings. A great step up for the young Swiss rider and this season should definitely give him some confidence for more success to come in 2022. Tim Merlier is our next rider on the list, a sprinter with a strong background in cyclocross but this was his first year riding Grand Tours. The Belgian star in the making managed to win several one day races but the pinnacle of his season was his stage two win at the Giro d'Italia and on top of that of course clinching his first Tour de France stage on the third stage which was a very chaotic finish to say the least. Furthermore Timurlier went on to win both stage one and stage four of the Benelux Tour as well. Merlier has definitely broken through as a big name in the sprinting game and showed that Alpensin Phoenix is not just a one-trick pony with Mathieu van der Poel so absolutely incredible season for him. Number six now and it is another Bahrain victorious rider I promise it's not just them and this rider managed to win win the epic edition of Paru Bay and this was incidentally on his first attempt as well and I'm of course talking about Sonny Colbrelli. Sonny Colbrelli has of course been there or thereabouts in many one day stage races but this year really took him up to the top echelon of cycling by also winning the Italian road race and also the European ahead of Remco Evenepoel a feat that hadn't been completed since Elia Viviani and in the Tour de France Colbrelli showed some incredible climbing as well as he finished third into the Tinia stage which was won by the next rider on our list and to top this whole season off as well Sonny Colbrelli actually managed to win a stage at the Benelux Tour and also the overall ahead of his teammate Matic Morhic. AG to our Citroen seemed like they'd given away all their GC hope after losing Romain Bardet at the end of 2020. But in 2021, in the Tour de France, Ben O'Connor stepped up and impressed by winning stage nine into Tinia and the plucky Australian managed to hang on in the GC battle to finish fourth overall, climbing with the best of the best. Next on our list, we have quite fittingly the fourth place finisher of the Giro d'Italia last year who also won the Malia Rosa incidentally and potentially could have been his breakthrough season in some respects that year but I'm gonna say this was a very big season for the Portuguese star in his second world tour season. Joao Almeida had a rough start to the Giro 
but he managed to claw back to finish overall sixth place after some inter-team tensions with Remco Vinopol. And then Joao Almeida went on to win his first ever professional stage race in the form of the Tour of Poland where he won two stages and on top of that he went on to win the Tour of Luxembourg as well. He seemed to be more confident as a rider this year and this could also be because of the forthcoming move he has to UAE Team Emirates where he definitely will be given a lot more chances. So that is going to be very interesting to see what this Portuguese superstar in the making can do in 2022. Now we move into the podium positions of this list and if you haven't already make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the things we're doing. But anyways in number three we have our fourth Bahrain victorious rider and this is Jack Haig and he has been potentially one of the biggest breakthroughs for Bahrain victorious and that's why he's in third since his move from Mitchelton Scott. Early on in the season he managed to finish seventh overall in Paris Nice, fifth in the Criteria de Dauphiné and looked to be very strong coming into the Tour de France but he was unfortunately caught up in crashes on stage three and unfortunately had to retire but however in the Vuelta España he right that wrong by finishing third overall with plenty of strong performances in the mountaintop finishes such as fourth on the Alto de Belafique and to put this amazing GC performance into context this was his eighth Grand Tour but the highest position before this third place was 19th in the Vuelta España in 2018 and this has really shown that he came out of this role of being a climbing domestique and stepping up to the plate. Incidentally this was also the first time that an Australian has been on the Vuelta España podium since 2009 when Cadell Evans did so. Second on our list is Ethan Hayter and this is his second year on the world tour. The 23 year old managed to run riot in many of the one day races this year starting off by finishing fourth in the Coppia Bartoli stage race after winning stage three. He then went on to finish second in the Walter Algarve winning the Queen stage on stage two and from that point he won the points classification in the Route de la Sol after winning stage two and stage five and then one of the crowning moments of his season he won the tour of norway after winning stage one and stage two and in the tour of britain he managed to finish second overall after winning stage three with his team the team time trial and then stage five into warrington before finishing second into gateshead and the incredible thing about his second place finish is that the podium he shared was with Walt van art and the world champion julian philippe so that just puts in a perspective how good he actually is and he was actually the first brit to finish on the podium since stephen cummings in 2016 plus he also picked up the points classification as well but it wasn't just the road where he had success he also became a world champion winning the Unmium event in Roubaix. Now we come to our number one and this is of course a previous interview guest on the channel and absolute superstar Jonas Vingegaard of Jombo Visma. The young Dane started the year by winning the Jabil Jais stage in the UAE tour and then going on to win the Copia Bartoli stage race after winning stage two and stage four into San Marino. In the Tour of the Basque Country he had a pivotal role in the final stage where he managed to man mark Tade Pogaccia after his leader Primus Roglic went up the road and by the end of the stage this actually meant that Jonas Vingo managed to finish second overall behind Primus Roglic and also took the young rider classification ahead of Tadej Pogacar. This battle between Jonas Vingo and Tadej Pogacar surprisingly repeated itself in the Tour de France after Roglic was caught up in crashes and for the three weeks Jonas Vingo was able to mostly hang on to the Slovenian superstar and his closest rival in the GEC and therefore finished second overall overall in his first ever Tour de France let's just stipulate that and this success also immediately shifted Jonas Vingor into stardom not bad for someone from the flatland of Denmark so that's it for our top 10 make sure to let us know down in the comments what you think and if we missed anyone out of course we'd love to hear what you think and remember subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date with all the things that we're doing and as always thank you for watching and have a nice day Thank you.